If you want to make a biologist twitch, ask them where in the classification system should they put a virus, or is a virus alive? Because eh, I can't answer that question. Viruses are weird things that are kind of in and out of a biologist's definition of what's alive, because viruses don't do anything except when they're inside of a regular host cell. They're kind of like, if you, this is why they named computer programs that infect other com uh, computer systems, viruses. It's because they're kind of like an individual program whose only purpose is to make more of that individual program. But when it's on the floppy disk, it doesn't do anything. Or when it's on the CD-ROM, it doesn't do anything. Or in the zip drive, it doesn't do anything. A regular cell is like an entire computer with all of its operating system and everything else. Now, the virus structure is typically some kind of protein coat wrap it, wrapped around uh, either DNA or RNA inside of that coat. Many viruses will have a capsule or a stolen portion of its host uh, membrane. Let's take a look at this uh, slide over here, and we can see this is a particular kind of virus called a bacteriophage because it infects and uh, kills bacteria. And here we can see the protein coat with the DNA inside. And what happens is that the external proteins, their job is to land on the bacteria that it's going to infect and insert its DNA inside of the bacteria. Let's look at this typical um, route of infection. And here we see a eukaryotic cell. We can tell because it's got a nucleus. And we see the virus comes in here. It binds to the plasma membrane. It does this because it has proteins on the exterior surface that um, will stick to particular proteins on the membrane of the target cell. When it gets inside, it releases its RNA, and it winds up copying that RNA, and then that RNA, in this case it's an RNA uh, virus, that RNA is then used to guide the building of proteins and more RNA that ultimately lead the, to the creation of more viruses that get released. If it uses DNA, then that instead of having RNA in here, we'll have DNA. The DNA will get opened up and transcribed. And again, the newly transcribed RNA will then be used to guide the construction of proteins and then the release of the virus. There's two basic life cycles followed by viruses, and some viruses do both. One is the lytic life cycle. And here we see a bacteriophage. And what it's doing is it's injecting its DNA into a bacterial cell. That's the green little box. Here's the DNA of the bacteria. Sometimes they'll incorporate their DNA and then they'll use the instructions of the viral DNA to build a bunch more of the DNA and proteins that make up the bacteria. And here you're seeing it, assembling it until it's got enough and it just bursts open the cell as it just fills it up with more and more viruses. It's basically taken over the cell and turned it into a virus factory. And this process of filling it up until it pops, or lyses, is why it's called the lytic life cycle. Now, some viruses will enter into the lysogenic cycle, or lysogenic phase. And here, it begins the same. The virus infects and injects its DNA or RNA, but instead of immediately attacking and destroying the cell, instead it gets kind of sneaky. And it just sits there doing nothing until the cell gets ready to make a copy of itself. Well, because it's added its DNA into the cell's DNA, when the cell does its normal DNA replication, you wind up with two copies of not just the bacterial DNA, but the viral DNA. And each daughter cell will be essentially infected. And it may sit there doing nothing and just allowing the bacteria to make more and more and more and more copies of it until environmental uh, triggers cause one of these daughter cells to enter the lytic cycle. As a little side note, HIV, the virus that's associated with a disease called AIDS, HIV is what's called a retrovirus. It uses RNA, and when it infects one of our helper T cells, it uses that RNA and an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which guides the reverse version of transcription, and it turns the RNA, makes a DNA copy of it, inserts that into our DNA, and that's why it can sit there in the helper T cells doing nothing, which is why some people get infected and show no symptoms, really, for months or even years, until eventually some of the cells start becoming lytic and start popping open and start eventually killing the host cells. So, that's viruses.